Hey guys, this is Mitch with Finepoint CGI, and today we're gonna talk about reflection probes. We're gonna talk about what reflection probes are, we're gonna talk about why you might wanna use them, how they work, and then we go through all the different options that reflection probes have inside of Godot. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we have to talk about is what a reflection probe is. And a reflection probe is a circular capture of the environment around you, okay? And it uses that circular capture to build what's called a cube map. And it uses that cube map to define the reflections inside of your scene within a bounding box area. And there are two ways to have your reflection probe work. You can either do the spherical mode or the box mode. The spherical mode takes a circular spherical capture of your environment and uses that as the image that it mixes with your reflection channel. And the other one is the box method. And what that does is it creates a cube map, which is a perfect square representation of that room. And it uses that and mixes it with your map. Now, the spherical representation is better generally for environments, for like exterior environments. And the cube projection is better for interior environments. So that's just something to keep in mind. And Godot supports both methods of reflection probes. So with a little bit of understanding of how reflection probes work, let's go ahead and check out how to do it inside of Godot. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to right click our scene. We're going to go ahead and add in a child and we'll go ahead and add in a reflection probe. All right. And you'll notice that once we add in a reflection probe, you'll see that suddenly this area here is a lot darker. You'll notice that here and here, it's just darker. And if I drag this over, you'll notice that over here, the object starts getting a bit on the darker side. It's almost like it's getting a shadow casted on it. And the reason why, if I move this around, you can see the change over here. And the reason why is because what it's doing is it's mixing your global illumination with your reflections, if that makes sense. So now that we have a basic understanding, let's go ahead and put this guy right in the center of our scene, just like so, and talk a little bit about how to make this a little larger. Because right now it only affects this little tiny box here. And that's what this extent section is for right here. You can come in and adjust this and you'll see that it makes your cube a little larger, just like this. Or if you'd rather, you can use these little buttons right here to move it up and out as you would expect. And then we'll go ahead and grab this little guy here and we will drag it out as well. We want to make sure the entire thing is encompassed. So you can see that now it's pretty much all encompassing. It's going to cover everything. So that's pretty much perfect. So now you'll see if we come up to our little um, mirror here, you'll see that we actually have a reflection, which is perfect. But you'll notice that if we look at this, you'll see that our reflection is of two candles right behind us. But if we rotate behind us, the candles are here, but it's offset. You'll see how it doesn't quite match up with what we would be seeing from our reflection. And the reason why that is, is because a reflection probe shoots its rays out from the center. You can see right here where it's located, it shoots it out from the center. If we were to move this around, you'll notice that it starts changing all of our reflections to be affected by different things. And that's something to keep in mind. So if we were to take this object, if we were to drag it up here like this, almost like as if it was the mirror, right? You'll see that your reflection in your mirror is correct. You have the, the tub here and you have your reflection as well, which is great. But we don't necessarily want that because that's gonna make our reflection pro be just slightly off from where we want it to be. So what we can do is if I control Z this back, we can actually click on these little buttons here, these little grab buttons here, or we can use our origin offset to offset where the rays are projected from. So you'll see if I move this forward and up, 
you'll notice that our reflection probe suddenly starts working as we would expect it to, but it encompasses our entire area as you would also expect it to. So that's what the origin offset is used for. Now that we have a basic understanding of how reflection probes kind of work, let's talk a little bit about some of the options you have here in your inspector. So the first one is update mode and update mode basically tells your reflection probe when should it update. So in this case, it's set to once. So if we grab this little object here, we pull it up and kind of put it out in front of our reflection probe like so, you'll see that it doesn't exist, right? But if we come into our reflection probe right here, we just adjust our update mode to always, you'll see that now it suddenly shows up. If we set it back to once, you'll notice that it is still there. If we click on our little guy and we move it over, you'll see that it's not moving, okay? And that's what update once means. It updates one time and it will never update again unless you change its update mode to always, and then it will update again. Now, if you change it to always, which I just did, if you move this over, you will see that now it's being updated constantly. Now, this is really cool to have a nice real time reflection, but this comes at a very big cost. If you take a look at your FPS right here, you'll see that our FPS is about 28, 27 FPS, and that's pretty terrible for a game, right? If we come down to our reflection probe and we change this from always to once, you will see that our FPS has gone up to 145 frames per second, which it looks like now it's, it's kind of hovering around 190, 109, 145, somewhere in there. So that's just something to keep in mind. If we go ahead and put this guy back to where it was, somewhere right about here-ish, and you'll see that it hasn't updated, so we'll need to update this. So let's go ahead and change this to always and then once, just so that it updates the object around it. So the next option is intensity. If we drag this down, you will see that our reflection starts slowly going away and it affects all the reflection of all of the objects in the scene. So if we pull this up versus pulling this down, you'll see how it affects the intensity of all of the objects around you. So this is really nice if everything in your scene is just way too shiny and you want to bring it down so that way you can ground the level a little bit better, if that makes sense. So next is max distance and max distance has never worked for me, but the way max distance is supposed to work is when it projects its ray from the center point right here, it's how far that ray will travel until it says I will no longer hit anything. This is really nice to help reduce your performance loss when you're running your always update. But you'll notice that if I turn on always and I'm running at 28 FPS and I change my max distance to something like 0.1, you'll see that nothing has changed. And same thing with if I set max distance to 0.01, you'll see that it just goes to zero and nothing has really changed. So that's something just to keep in mind is I really haven't gotten this to work, but that's the idea behind how it works. Next up is two things that we've actually talked about, extents and uh, origin offset. Extents affects the extents of the box, which we talked about, and origin offset allows you to offset the origin of your reflection probe. Now, if I set this to 000, it will go right back to the center of my bounding box which is something to keep in mind. Next, I have the box projection. So if I go ahead and click on box projection, what it's going to do is it's going to change my reflection probe from a spherical map to a cube map. So if you click this, you'll notice everything changes slightly. So you'll see spherical, cube, spherical and cube. And how it works is what it does is it takes your object and instead of making it a sphere and projecting the rays from a sphere, it instead projects it from a cube, which can give you more accurate 
reflections in a regular environment like a house or something like that. So a lot of times I like to use box projection for objects that are in a room kind of like this bathroom. And you can see here, you can really see the difference. If I kind of angle this, it's difficult to move around. Let me adjust this down a tiny bit. So you'll see if we look at this reflection here and I turn off box projection, you'll see everything kind of moves slightly and everything kind of gets warped just a little bit. If you move box projection on, you'll see that that warping kind of goes away. If you look right here, you see how this is warped like this. It's kind of like a, a U shape. Whereas if we turn on box projection, it becomes a straight line. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, next up is enable shadows and enabling shadows. If you click that on, it will now mix your shadows into your reflection probe. So if we set our origin offset to zero back to center and we enable shadows, you'll notice that objects that are in shadow start losing their reflection amount. So you can see here how it's so intense here. But once you enable shadows, it reduces the intensity of that projection, which is super useful if you want to have realistic reflections inside of your shadows. It is useful to keep it off in some cases. For instance, if you're doing nature shots or things like that, where you might want reflections in your shadow or you might want that extra global illumination going on, that might be a nice feature here for this object. Next up is call mask. Now this one's really easy. If we re put our object right here, just like so, we just kind of drag this guy up here, something like this, and we come take a look at our object. You'll see that we have a back wall here. Call mask allows us to call objects based off of what layer they are on. So if we select this back wall piece right here, these two wall pieces, and we go to our visual instance and we change it from layer one to layer 10 instead, and then we select our reflection probe and we change our call mask to 10, you will notice that our wall is gone. So if I turn it on and I turn it off, you can see that we can call objects out. Now this is really nice. If you don't want objects to show up on your reflection probe, but you want them to show up in the scene when the user turns around. So this can be useful, for instance, if you're making a scary game or something like that, you could have it where there's nothing in the reflection, but then when the user turns around, there's a scary monster sitting there. And that's something that that's a very good use case for your call mask. Another good thing that'd be useful is if you want to call out specific objects so that way your reflection probe can show objects behind it. If I take this object and I move it back here and I click on my reflection probe and I turn on my call mask, you will see that my tub is sitting there. So another really cool use case for this is if you wanted to make it so that you have a mirror and you can only see objects when you're looking through the mirror if you wanted to make it so you could only see the monster when you look through the mirror there was a game a while back that did that and that was a cool way of approaching it is you could call the monsters visually from the scene but have them show up in the reflection probe so that's some of really cool use cases for the call mask now, the next big option we have here is under interior. In interior, this is where things get really cool for Godot. So right now, all of your reflections are being reflected by your sky. So this color of your sky is what's being reflected in your scene right here. Okay. But what we can do is we can say this reflection probe is only an interior reflection probe. If you go ahead and check this little box, what's going to happen is it's going to mix this ambient color with your shadows. So if I click that, suddenly your scene completely changed and became way more dynamic. And this is one of the cool things about reflection probes is that you can really get some nice GI effects very cheaply using reflection probes. So the next big option here is ambient color. And this is when things get really cool with Godot. 
the ambient color affects the color of the global illumination that this reflection probe brings into the scene. So what's nice about that is if it's black, you're going to have really nice dark blacks. If it's like a nice gray, you can see that you can really affect your shadows and your lighting using your reflection probe. You can also impart color onto your, your reflection probe as well. So if you wanted to make this like a nice blue shadow, you can come in here and just kind of throw in just a touch bit of blue, maybe make it a nice intense blue. And you can see that we now have a nice spooky atmosphere here inside of Kato. The next big option is ambient energy. And ambient energy is much like this, where you can come in here and adjust your value to make it really bright and really dark. That's exactly what ambient energy does. If you bring this up, it's going to make it bright. If you bring it down, it's going to bring make it dark. The nice thing about this, though, is you can adjust it in code. So Unlike ambient color, where you have to set the color every time, where you have to set it through a value like this or a value like this, right? These, these um, HSV or the RGB values. Instead, you can just do it via an integer value here. And that means that you could have a time when it's something like this, right? And you could be like, okay, it's daytime or something like that. And then you could kill it and make it dark and say it's nighttime or something like that, which is really useful. Ambient contribution is basically like having a contrast node here. So if I pull this up, you'll see that it really starts darkening the colors. So it's basically like pulling your ambient energy down, but not quite because it kind of crushes the color a little bit, if that makes sense, versus mixing it with black, if that makes sense. So there are two different ways to do basically the same effect, but they're really, they're both really useful. So to recap, reflection probes makes your scene feel grounded. It adds in all of those reflections and it adds in a lot of GI into your scene. And it is a really cool way to make your scene feel a lot more dynamic and a lot more interesting than if you didn't have it. So if you look at our before where I shut this off, you will see that it is super bright. You have all this blue from the sky and things like that from all your reflections. And then when you turn it on, you will see how much more grounded and dynamic your scene feels. So that's one of the big advantages of having reflection probes. But that is all I have for you guys today. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Hey, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. This video, as with all of my videos, was a viewer suggested video. So if you have any suggestions, please throw them in the comments below and I will throw it on my Trello board. It's a large Trello board, but I will get to your suggestion. I just finished building my Nakama WebRTC project, so I'll be recording that soon and putting out a video on that one. So your suggestion will get taken care of. And hey, if you have any questions or comments about this, please throw them in the comments below or you can jump on my Discord, link is in the description and hit me up or any of the guys there and we'll be more than happy to help you out with your project. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching and I will see you all next time. Thanks.